Thank you so much for joining me for another Woman Crush Wednesday. Today we're going to talk about an incredible woman, Martha Gellhorn, who is a travel writer, a novelist, one of the greatest war correspondents of the 20th century, and also just happened to be Ernest Hemingway's third wife. Number one, Martha Ellis Gellhorn was born in 1908 to Edna Fisher Gellhorn, who was a suffragette, and George Gellhorn, who was a gynecologist. By the time she was eight, she was already involved, thanks to her mother, in women's rights demonstrations, including the Democratic Convention in St. Louis in 1916. In 1926, she ended up going to Bryn Mawr College, but in 1927, she ended up dropping out because she wanted to be a journalist. Most notably, she started writing for the New Republic. By the 1930s, she had already spent time in Europe, was a very strong part of the pacifist movement, had written a book called What Mad Pursuit, and became friends with Eleanor Roosevelt. So she did a lot in her first like 30 years of life. Fact number two, she spent a great deal of time during the Great Depression traveling around the US as a field investigator for the Federal Emergency Relief Administration. The reports that she ended up making ended up being compiled into an official report for the Great Depression, and she used these reports in order to create a book of short stories that was entitled The Trouble I've Seen and was published in 1936. During this time, she also traveled with the esteemed photographer Dorothea Lange, and together they ended up capturing the lives of struggling Americans during this time. Fact number three, Martha met Ernest Hemingway during a Christmas at Key West in 1936. She had just been hired as a correspondent for Collier's Weekly, and they decided to travel together to Spain to cover the Spanish Civil War. A few years later, in 1940, they were married. Unfortunately, their marriage was almost immediately rocky. Martha resented Hemingway's larger-than-life presence, noting that she didn't want to be a footnote in someone else's life. Hemingway did not like the fact that Martha would travel all the time, and specifically tried to sabotage some of her travel plans during World War II. Years later, uh, one of the conditions for granting interviews, Martha said that she would give an interview as long as Hemingway's name was not mentioned. Fact number four, Martha's work as a war correspondent made her one of the most daring journalists of the 20th century. She was the only woman to land at Normandy during D-Day, she ended up getting there by hiding in a hospital ship bathroom where she impersonated a stretcher bearer. She was also one of the first journalists to report from the Dachau concentration camp once the camp was liberated. After World War II, Martha was hired by the Atlantic Weekly and ended up covering both the Vietnam War as well as the Arab-Israeli conflict of the 60s and 70s. Martha kept working into her 70s, covering the Central American Civil Wars, and while she had slowed down in her 80s, she still covered the U.S. invasion of Panama in 1989. By the time she officially retired in the 1990s, she had published 21 books and lived in over 19 locales. Fact number five, in the last years of her life, Martha ended up suffering from very poor health. She was almost blind and she had ovarian cancer that ended up spreading to her liver. In 1998, when she was living in London, she ended up taking a cyanide capsule to end her own life. In 1999, the Martha Gellhorn Prize for Journalism was established in her honor, and in 2008, she was honored with a stamp by the US Postal Service, which is pretty cool. I love stamps. Final fun fact, Nicole Kidman actually portrayed Martha in Philip Kaufman's film, Hemingway and Gellhorn. Thank you so much for joining me for another Women Crush Wednesday to learn all about Martha Gellhorn and all the incredible contributions that she had to journalism. Please join me again right here next week to learn about another incredibly badass woman. <laughs>